Welcome to the Upshot, Multi World Disc Golf's podcast about the latest in the disc golf world. I'm the editor, Charlie Eisenhood. Joining me is Josh Mansfield. It is Thursday, and it is January 27th. And Josh, you know what? I I I I'm happy to say it. Tomorrow is my birthday. Well, happy birthday, Charlie. Do you know what I want for my birthday? Uh, you want the 49ers to go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> yep. Let's not play around. Saw that Let's one. Saw around. that one coming. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I um, I'm looking forward to uh, this weekend's NFL games, of course, and I'm very excited for today's show because we've got a lot of fun stuff to get to. Before we get to it, I just want to point out we have just launched the 2022 Ulti World Disc Golf Reader Survey, and let's call it a listener survey as well. Please go check it out. It'll take you about five minutes. You'll get entered for a chance to win an annual Ulti World Disc Golf subscription, which of course will get you access to the Upshot bonus segments and it's uh, exclusive articles, the newsletter, and we've got a lot of stuff in the works. So please go check it out. Uh, we want your feedback. You can tell us what we're doing wrong on the podcast and how to make it better. Um, and uh, again, it'll just take five minutes. You can find it uh, on the homepage of the website. I'll try to put the link in the description as well. So today, wow, we've got a lot to get to. And first and foremost, yes, it has finally come here. Katrina Allen has signed with DGA. So the rumors, the leaks, they were true. Katrina signing with DGA and uh, no terms were disclosed. Interesting. But um, she actually returns to her first ever sponsor as an amateur player. Let's just take a quick second. And here from Katrina, this is from the announcement video the DGA put out on their YouTube channel. I just want to be the best at what I do. And if I am passionate about something, I'm going to put my heart and soul into it. So I don't know if how many people know, but as an amateur, I was sponsored by DGA. They were my first sponsor. Knowing that those are the people who have my back made it a really easy choice. And then as this process has gone on, the relationships just keep proving that this is the right choice and that I'm where I need to be. So there you have it. Katrina Allen to DGA after winning her second world championship last year in dramatic fashion on the final hole against Paige Pierce. Um, and look, I mean, this DGA all of a sudden becomes a company that people are like, wow, wait, what disc do they have? Like, let me go check out the lineups right now. Not that they're saying that there aren't people out there who throw DGA. I have some DGA in my bag. I have a Tempest. It's actually my go-to distance driver. But I don't think a lot of people are like super familiar with the brand. This this is going to change that. I mean, regardless of anything else, people are going to take this with what they've done this offseason, signing Katrina, signing Andrew Marweed, and they're going to say, you know what? I'm going to check out what's going on with DGA. And, and that has to be seen as a win for a company that's primarily known for making baskets. Without a doubt. I mean, they they have two very high profile players who are on coverage a lot. And this is this is what I thought of when I thought of DGA. Even if, I mean, obviously, Katrina and Marweed fans are going to go buy these discs, right? They're going to have signature discs. Those fans are definitely going to migrate over and buy some of that plastic. But when we go back to the debate about naming discs that players are using on coverage, I think that DGA profits from that more than other companies, right? Because when I see someone throw a Firebird... I know what a Firebird is. I say, oh, cool, he's throwing a Firebird. Maybe a new player thinks to themselves, I need to get myself a Firebird. But for the most part, the you know the general population who plays disc golf has their bag pretty well established, know what a Firebird does, know that the Innova pros throw Firebirds well, and aren't going to change their mind about you know their overstable fairway driver. But when you hear coverage of a disc that you don't know and see shots that you think are spectacular with discs that you've never heard of, I think it's going to be easier to assign that great shot to the disc. It's going to be easier to be excited about that disc. And so I think they're really going to profit from two players who were on feature cards a lot last season and are now going to be having their discs read regularly on different shots on the coverage. So uh, DGA coming out with 
a couple of uh, discs for Katrina Allen. It's a signature edition Rift, a mid-range disc, as well as a Proto Driver. Um, I assume that they put the numbers up on this. It doesn't say. Great glide and a little bit of turn. So this is a prototype Speed 7 disc. Um, so, you know, fairway driver. And those were made available on the DGA website, which lends credence to my theory that the reason this took so long for them to make this announcement is because they needed the discs in hand to be able to be ready to sell them. I think that that's probably what held this up. I know there's been people saying, oh, they were waiting because they wanted to have the spotlight all to themselves, which, you know, that's a byproduct of this for sure. But it also has felt like a little, in some ways, like it took too long. Uh, but I think the reason is most likely that they wanted to have these discs all made, right? If it's a proto driver, maybe they, they've they been still working on getting the actual discs manufactured. Because remember, Discraft manufactures DGA discs, so they don't just get to spin up their own machines. Uh, they got to get in line. So, um, anyway, I, I think the news is here. It's obviously a great situation for Katrina Allen to be able to get a big win at this stage in her career, in her late thirties and sign a new deal that although we don't know the terms certainly is going to be more lucrative than what she had going on at Prodigy. I, there's just no way she's walking away from Prodigy without a pretty good reason to do so. Uh, and so the money talks, and uh, I think uh, it, it's going to be really exciting to see what goes in Katrina's bag because I think a lot of people are going to want to see what you know what these what, what understable discs is she going to make look magical out on the course. Yeah, it, it's a, I think it's a big win for Katrina. I think it's a big win for DGA. And you're right in the sense that it did feel like it was kind of getting drawn out, but. This is going to take up the news cycle. I mean, what else? What other news is there going on right now? So uh, we don't have anything. So Katrina now gets to control the news cycle. DGA gets to control the news cycle. It, it's a great marketing strategy. I think it's a good endorsement and a great win for DGA. And the question becomes, you know, what does this mean for DGA? You know, I'm actually very curious to talk with them, and I, I hope we can have somebody on the show from DGA very soon um, and ask them some of the questions about, you know, their decision to go after two, you know, one extremely high profile player in Katrina and another decently high profile player in Andrew Marweed this off season. And, you know, what does this mean for the direction of the company? Um, you know, this is a this is kind of like a, a secondary win for Discraft. In a sneaky way, because obviously DGA success contributes to this craft's bottom line. Um, and uh, we're actually in our subscriber bonus segment this week. Now that all of the chips have been found their way onto the table and we know where everybody's going, we are going to grade manufacturers off seasons. So we're going to take a look at who, who got added, who left, who got re-signed, and we're going to grade every manufacturer's off season. So we're Hope you'll join us for that, discgolf.ultiworld.com slash subscribe to be able to get all of those bonus segments in your podcast app of choice. So, uh, you know, this DGA it goes from company that, you know, makes good discs and has kind of a cult following um, and is known for making very good baskets to, okay, like now you're like a, a player because that's what doing these kinds of moves is going to do. Uh, so interesting strategic move. We'll see how much if if they double down on this in the future. I mean, could DGA suddenly become, uh, a, you know, a rising star brand if this works out? Maybe they have more money to make more signings next off season. And and even if we've seen the way that the being at the very top gets weighted better than just being you know second tier, right? It, it, even if you have one outstanding player on both MPO and FPO, that's enough to keep your brand in the conversation. Yeah, Think about you, MVP. Yes. Perfect example, right? It, is DGA going to win the Manufacturer's Cup from Ulti World next season? No, they're not. 
And that's okay. Because as long as Katrina continues to hit lead card, which she's going to do, and as long as Andrew Marweed continues to hit lead card during the East Coast swing, which he's <laughs> going to do, it, it's going – and I, in terms of Andrew Marweed, I mean, we've talked about this, and I don't want to belabor the point. I think an excellent value signing. I mean, he plays his area well. It gets him – I think a disproportionate amount of coverage for where you would rank him in the disc golf pro tour standings overall. And so being on that lead card is where you get the most bang for your buck in terms of sure. publicity. And they found two people that managed to hit lead card often. And that's that, that is all and in terms of endorsements, I think an excellent choice and a very strategic choice. Well, now we, we, we finally, it feels like we've come to the end of the signing season. And it took almost to the end of January to get there, but we're finally here. We know where people are going to end up. And now we get to start thinking about, okay, who's going to show up and start throwing their new plastic well. And that will be, uh, that will be fun. And we talked about that on a previous show. I think Katrina is going to have no issues, by the way. I think she's going to step right into new discs. Just strikes me as the kind of player that's going to be able to quickly adjust. I'm curious to know if she has any old DGA from when she was an amateur. You know, Good point, mid, right? That she loves, uh, that <laughs> she just kind of you know hung on the wall or stuck in a closet. And and are like are those molds even in production at this right. point? <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see. Because it's so, been over anyway, a decade. So right, fun fun stuff. Uh, Katrina Allen signing with DGA, and I think a lot of people saw those rumors and were like, no, no way, no, it can't be DGA. I mean, no way. It's gonna be Innova. It's gonna be Discraft. Not so. And uh, a sneaky move, a sneaky move by DGA. And uh, I, I'm super curious to get some more details behind the story behind how this came together um, and hoping that we can talk to Katrina and, and, and or somebody from DGA about it very soon here on the show. So uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we've got we've got something very fun. We now have the full lineups for the All-Star Weekend for Disc Golf Pro Tour, which is going to be our first taste of Pro Disc Golf coming up in just a couple weeks in Arizona. And so we are going to do a mock draft. It's coming up after this. The Upshot is presented by Pound Disc Golf, makers of the best bags in the sport. Well, the Pound 2022 Ambassadors have been announced, and you've got to hear these names. Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, Lisa Fakus, Dustin Keegan, Zoe Andyke, Cole Radalin, Maria Oliva, Vanessa Van Dyken, and Christian Dietrich are all going to be repping Pound. They'll be wearing Pound bags out on the course, and of course they are, because these are the best bags in the game. Go to pounddiscgolf.com to check out your options and get ready for their next custom drop coming at the beginning of February. Welcome back to The Upshot. We've got a little all-star mock draft to do right now. And so we know the 12 players that will compete in both MPO and FPO. And just quick recap, this year, instead of having kind of doubles and then singles play, they're going to have the two top players draft teams, and then those teams are going to compete in single stroke play, double stroke play, and skills competition with uh, accuracy, putting, and distance. And then you're going to score points in all of those categories, and the highest scoring team is going to win the all-star weekend competition and win some money. So cool. Uh, they do this in the you know the NBA all-star game is now draft. It's a ton of fun. So we thought, hey, you know what? Let's do a mock draft. So uh, the top players are on the MPO side, Eagle McMahon and Calvin Heimberg. And on the FPO side, Paige Pierce and Katrina Allen. Uh, you know, you get the nice Paige versus Katrina thing going on. You know, like Eagle versus Calvin. I don't know that we've quite got the whole like rivalry thing going on there. Like even the pro tour, the picture they use is like the two of them like grinning side by side. You know, it would have been a little more fun if it was Ricky and Paul, but uh, we, they're not going to be there. So we're going to move on. Um, so Josh, I'm going to give you the honors. Would you rather pick first in MPO or FPO? I would pay a lot of money to 
play disc golf like Eagle McMahon. So I'm gonna pick Eagle. <laughs> I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna be Eagle for for the sake. And I'll I'll take MPO. So who okay, do you, who so, do you want for so MPO? Josh is now Eagle McMahon. Hello, everybody. Uh, and I am Calvin Heimberg. <laughs> Hey, that means you're a Tampa Bay fan now, though. You got to watch on YouTube if you want to see uh, see that joke land. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I thank God I don't have to pick somebody from L.A. Um, so uh, and then on the FPO side, I will be Paige Pierce. Josh okay. will be Katrina Allen. And so let's just jump right into it. MPO draft. Josh, you're up first. Um, I'll just quickly run down the players that are on the board so everybody knows who's available. Adam Hammes. Um, Kyle Klein, Kevin Jones, James Conrad, Nicolo Castro, Chris Dickerson, Drew Gibson, Ezra Aderhold, Matt Oram, and Gannon Burr. So there's your lineups. Um, I am going to take the person who I think is arguably one of the best all-around players, but also has an incredible strength relative to this field, and that's his putting. Uh, I'm going to take Adam Hammes. He's I, I can't argue with the pick. Great, great player. Not excellent putter, excellent putter, but not necessarily a one trick pony. So very pleased to have Adam Hammes. Highest finisher behind Eagle and Calvin on the pro tour last year. Clearly on the rise. Mm-hmm. I, I like the multiple pick. elite series wins. Okay. As Calvin Heinberg, I am going to, I'm actually going to go down the board a little bit in terms of the, you know, sort of initial seating. Right. And I'm going to take Chris Dickerson. Uh, this is a bit of a risky pick. I understand that because Chris is, you know, learning new plastic right now. But I'm going to trust the man, uh, and I, I think that basically, I just think he's the best available player in this group. Yeah, like people forget because he doesn't play all the time. Like if he played every tournament, he would be up at the top with the other three, four guys. He could the be only a reason captain. He finishes, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm taking Chris Dickerson, Great pick. which is I know is a little risky, but. I like my chances, and I feel like he's at least going to have dialed the putter in. Mm-hmm. Um, and for my second pick here, we are in a snake draft. Mm, this is this is really tough. I'm I'm going to go for best available again, and I'm going to take Kevin Jones. Oh, okay. Yeah, I will say if I had to pick a doubles partner off this board, Kevin Jones is near the top. So good. Yeah. I think he's. Oh, you finished. You shut. You your 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 upshot landed just outside the circle. <laughs> no problem. Also, a very dynamic forehand and backhand combo. Great, great pick. And just a, I feel like a great competitor in this kind of like head to head type format. Yeah. I mean, the guy won the disc golf pro tour championship in a essentially this kind of format. Mm-hmm. That's true. So uh, I'm going for best available in both, and not really picking specific individual skill sets, which. We'll see if that ends up being a good idea or not, but you're up. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go hyper specialized for my next two. And this was a combo from when, when we talked about doing this draft, I was like, this is the combo that I want to get because I want them to play doubles together. Drew Gibson, who throws the buzz farther than anybody of these guys, except maybe Eagle throws a driver. Uh, And then I'm also going to take James Conrad. Mm. So incredible distance as long as well as just exceptional putting specializing here yeah i mean look those were guys on my short list for my previous picks i'm not super happy that i'm not going to get either of them but it is what it is i'm going to take kyle klein with my next pick my fourth pick or i guess it's my third pick um I think, you know, the nice thing about Klein and the nice thing about my my team overall is versatility right now. That's true. I have a lot of players who are good at a lot of things. Yep. I think Kyle Klein fits that bill. Can bomb. Mm-hmm. Can shot shape. Great putter. Great putter. Uh, excellent from circle one. Not as good for circle two, but excellent from circle one. So uh, I feel like that's a that, that that's going to be extremely useful in both singles and doubles. Maybe not as much in skills. We'll see. Uh, with my next pick, I think I, now I get to specialize a little bit. I'm taking Gannon Burr. I think Gannon Burr also does have some versatility, but he is elite putter, elite putter. So um, he's going to be certainly on my putting team. Uh, so those are my next two picks. Good, good picks. 
for my pit next picks, oh my gosh. This this is where it gets tricky. I mean, it's been tricky the entire time. But we have we have Orem, Nico, and Ezra left on the board. My, I mean, Adam obviously is a versatile player, but he's he's an excellent putter. I think I'm going to take the two players. I'm I'm going to do what you did in your first two picks, and I'm going to go with what I believe are the most versatile players left on the board. And in my opinion, that would probably be Matty O and, and then Nico. Um, I think they just have the most developed game left. Ezra throws really far, but I, I just don't feel like I need that. So, On the other hand, I am actually very happy to get Ezra. <laughs> <laughs> it's a perfect fit because I need somebody to be in the driving skills contest and give us a chance against who I'm sure is going to be Eagle and Drew. Uh, I don't know how that did, we're how did you win, know? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to have Ezra at least to put in that group. So, um, Ezra is, I think he finished third at the world, uh, world's driving competition. So have you seen him? Like, uh, di- well, di- yes. discs, discs but cowering as he fear. told us on the upshot, it's more about technique. Uh, it's really easy to say that when you look strength. like him though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, okay. So there it is. So, uh, your team, Josh. Eagle, Adam Hammes, Drew Gibson, James Conrad, Matt Orem, Nicolo Castro. And I have Calvin Heimberg, Chris Dickerson, Kevin Jones, Kyle Klein, Gannon Burr, and Ezra Aderhold. I have a, I have a youthful team compared to you. That's true. You got you got some vets. <laughs> I wonder I want to do like an average age. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're gonna come back to our line well you know what let's just do them right now since we're already here who do you want to put into your putting competition you have to choose two people for putting for accuracy and for driving okay uh so who's going to be your putters first one is definitely james um Mm -hmm. natural uh this this is one you know i think we talked about this eagle is a great putter he's an exceptional putter yes and as much as I would love to put Eagle in a couple divisions, I can't. So I'm going to put Adam in instead. So I'm going to go with Adam and James for my putting division. It's hard to argue with that. I mean, is it possible that Adam's a better putter than Eagle? I think it's definitely possible. Yeah. I'm going to look at the stats from last season because I think it's definitely. Uh, so Eagle is 89 and 32. Uh-huh. What was Adam Hammes? 84 and 32. Okay. So he's not. But God, Eagle is so good at disc golf. It's actually (laughs) incredible how good he is. And like, he's going to start winning so many majors very Uh soon. Um, Okay. So you've got Adam and James. I am going to go with Gannon Burr. Okay. One of the best on tour. Uh, And I actually have a couple options here, but I think I'm going to go with Chris Dickerson. Mm. uh, Who's just an, it's a little. That's hard. (sighs) It's it, hard because I'm worried about the new plastic. The other thing we don't know is how much is this a circle one? How much is circle two? We we don't know. We don't know. We know I nothing. Mean, about this could the be format. this could be fifty percent circle two. You have to assume it's some combination of both. Sure. But anyway, I, look, I'm going to trust Chris Dickerson is going to figure out a putter by then, and so I'm going to take Chris. I wonder what he's. Putting I feel like with. it's more likely that your putting is going to be good with new plastic faster Mm -hmm. than like your touch and i'm not going to put him in the driving competition so that's what that's what i've got that that makes sense that makes sense um okay so let's do accuracy next who do you have for accuracy i I actually think it's easier for i say driving because i honestly i think accuracy is going to be the the one that gets chosen last okay fair yeah for for most uh, in my mind so in driving i'm going to put Ezra, Aderhold, okay. no question about it. Shocking. Um, and then I have left, I have Calvin, I have Kevin Jones, and I have Kyle Klein. And I, honest to God, I just don't know which of those guys throws the furthest. Um, I'm going to put Kyle Klein, though, in the category. I mean, mm-hmm. if anything else, the branding of Discmania lets me think that he's got the <laughs> longest arm. That's right. The, you, di- the kid can bomb, for sure. He definitely can. He's one of the crush boys. That's... So I'm going with Ezra and Kyle in the driving competition. Okay. 
uh, in my driving competition. Easiest two picks of my game. Uh, I've got Drew and Eagle. <laughs> Did, are you shocked? <laughs> Do we have a chance? Depends on what it is exactly what the contest is. If it's just, just like purely like you get three <laughs> shots at it, who throws the furthest? Like uh, so because there's an accuracy division, I, I don't think I think it's I'm, literally just gonna be thrown in a field. I'm gonna call celebrity shot <laughs> double G off the top rope coming in for my celebrity shot. You might have a chance if you call it double <laughs> G. <laughs> uh, I, but seriously, I mean Drew and Eagle. It's crazy. I, it's, I, I, <laughs> They're gonna throw so far. It's gonna be sne- it's gonna be so epic when Ezra and Kyle pull it off. Um, okay, leaving accuracy. Matt Oram, Nico Locastro for you, Josh, and Calvin Heimberg, Kevin Jones for me. I feel great about my matchup. I there. think yours is incredible. So let's let's do you want to do scores real quick then. Uh, yeah, who do you think is gonna win each category? Okay, I I, I take driving. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, so that gives me one. You take I think accuracy. I win accuracy. I think you win accuracy. I think putting is the putting is hard. I really don't know. Chris, so Chris was 82 and 25 and Gannon was 87 and 29. 87 29. Those that's elite stuff. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, okay, and then I have said- Adam was 84 and 32. Wow. Great. And James is 85 and 31. Wow. Circle two putting, you have the edge. Yeah. Circle one putting, I may have the edge. Depends, so on, it the just format. depends on the format. So let's just, we'll just leave that. Un- we'll leave open points as well. We'll let, yeah. the, we'll let the listeners argue amongst themselves. Okay. All right. So how about, how about for your doubles pairings? Who are you going to put into? Because you have to pick pairings mm-hmm. and then seed them one okay. to three. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with my, my number one seed. And, and I think my strategy, I'm not going to go for a power team. I'm going to go with three really good teams. Uh, so I'm putting Eagle and Matt Orem together. And the reason why is because like, like we know, Eagle does everything amazing. There's nothing that he doesn't do well. He's got the four, he's got back and he's got the putt, he's got distance, he's accurate. But the one thing that I think Eagle can lack is the occasional consistency. And sure. so Matty O, in my opinion, can help fill that gap. In a best I am place. going to put my top two players into my top pairing. Oh, so you're going high power. I'm also curious to know if they're going to have to make these decisions in secret or if they're going to be like mm. public and they can make changes because there's like some – there's some there's some strategy behind That's that. That's true. But I'm going to go with Calvin and Chris Dickerson in my top pairing. Okay. And I just think, you know, the combination of the sort of the two most versatile top players on Amazing. my team is going to give me a great chance to win against, you know, an, an admittedly superior opponent in Eagle McMahon. But, you know, Matteo is very good too. Don't get me wrong. It's going to be a great matchup. But I think that that's my best chance to win in that against Eagle. Otherwise, I feel like I'm conceding. I honestly feel like you probably take that point. Perhaps. I think I think a Chris and Calvin matchup is just it's very very good. Uh so who's your two seed? I'm going with Kevin Jones and Gannon Burr. Okay. Uh great great putter and Gannon of course. Mm-hmm. Um Kevin Jones kind of a versatile all-around player. I think uh you know both of them are great circle two putters. I just like I just like the but the kind of the combination of putting there and feel like that's going to give me a potential edge in the matchup. Okay. Um I am going to put this is the combo I was really excited about because I would love to watch these two play doubles together. Best shot doubles. Worst shot doubles. This is the worst team you could possibly imagine. But for best <laughs> best shot doubles, watch out Drew Gibson and James Conrad. That's a great matchup. I star power alone. I got to give you the point. Okay. I mean, very different, very different teams there. That's for sure. Very different teams. So I, I think the, the the putting strength of my team, and it's not like Gannon can't throw far. I I, I don't know. I I think this is going to be really interesting. Gannon's probably the most interesting player at this whole event mm-hmm. because it's like, how good is this kid? How is he going to look? 
amongst what is otherwise mostly like big time superstar names. And then, you know, you have Gannon Burr and no disrespect to him, but he's not a household name yet. And so I want to see how he does. Um, we'll, we'll see. Who do you got for your third matchup? Well, third matchup leaves me with Adam Hammes and Nico. It's going to be an interesting pairing. A little <laughs> bit of uh, – you better hope things don't go bad for those guys. I, uh, I stuck if they a- go bad, it's going to be a vicious spiral <laughs> to the depths. <laughs> I stuck a box of firecrackers in their disc golf bags <laughs> so that we could watch the fireworks. <laughs> I'm going with the like ultra likable combination of Kyle Klein and and uh, Ezra Aderhold. Uh so, you know, elite power, enough putting, I think. Oh yeah. And yeah. It could be interesting. I I mean your your team clearly has better putting. My team I think has better power. I think you're right. And it should be uh I feel like it's a little bit open again. Yeah, I I'm happy to leave an open one on each of these. I think it's All right. I think it's exciting. Okay. So, okay, so let me just, I'm going to quickly run down the singles matchups, and we're going to pick who we think is going to win. Okay, these are these are dictated by uh, di- the 2021 Disc Golf Pro Tour standings. Yeah, so we did not set this auto seated based on which the teams are. Eagle versus Calvin. Eagle, got to give it to him. Uh, Adam Hammes versus Kyle Klein. I also think Adam. Okay, I'll give it to you. James Conrad versus Kevin Jones. Jones. Fair. Nico Castro versus Chris Dickerson. Dickerson. Give me Chris, baby. Drew Gibson versus Ezra Aderhold. This, tough. This one's the toughest. I think that Drew does. Uh, uh, Drew has to he, get the edge. I think so too. Drew has to get the edge. I, I I think Ezra can win. I think you're right. I think that has a lot of upset potential. Matt Orem versus Gannon Burr. The alternates. Um, the alternates. I, I think you got to give it to Matty O. I got to give it to you. Okay, so on the so MPO that's a, that's side, that's an edge for you, four to two, we think. Yeah, so based on our predictions, we have, and let's let's even get rid of the Drew Ezra matchup. That that one I think really has an upset potential. So let's let's just call that point neutral. Leave that a blank. Yeah, so we'll go three to two for me. So I I take the edge five to four, and we leave three points on the board of where we think we didn't want to make the call. Any any looking back at the draft, are there any changes you wish you could make? Um, I think I should have put Adam and Nico as my number two seed in my doubles partnership. I think they're better than Drew and James. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting, that's an interesting point. I, I looking back, but, but, but is it a strategy? Because I went with the, all three are very good, right? So is it a good strategy to put my second seed actually third? I mean, it. We'll have to. We'll just have to see. But I, I feel like I can I still think Chris Dickerson and Kevin Jones is the right first two picks. I wonder if I should have taken. Like I'm, I'm play, I'm playing a little risky by picking Gannon Burr yeah. and and Kyle Klein and Ezra Aderhold. Like I get that, but I think I like the upside here. That's fair. I mean, it, G- Gannon could show out. Yeah, yeah. Let's 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 move on. Let's move okay. on. Let's All go right. to FPO. All right. Um, and I love and how we'll you look say, at the whole thing. I love how you say, we'll see how this goes as if these are actually the teams. Like <laughs> uh, these could be not, not even close to right. Not so it close. doesn't even matter. I, to be clear, we're, we're picking as like in our own strategic minds. We're not trying to put ourselves into the mind of the player because there's obviously like weird friendships and rivalries and things that are going to play into these decisions. Um, so for example, I'm Paige Pierce. I think. Paige Pierce is probably going to pick Missy Gannon first overall. They're great friends, team Discraft, the whole thing. But in purposes of this exercise and wanting to win this competition against you, I'm going to pick Haley King, who I think is the best pick for the first overall pick. Oh, I wanted Haley King so bad that I almost <laughs> decided to be Paige instead of Eagle. Because it's like just for the point of picking Haley. I think she's the best pick in this. Quick, quickly, I forgot. Let me give you the rundown of the players available. So obviously, yeah. Paige and Katrina are the captains. And then you have Haley, Missy Gannon, Sarah Hokum, uh, Lisa Fakus, Heather Young, Jessica Weiss, Kona Panis, Deanne Carey, Owen Scoggins, Rebecca Cox. Okay. I, <laughs> I think I'm going to take your strategy for this one. And I'm going to take... 
who I believe are the most versatile players uh, and just overall the best. And so I'm I'm going to take Missy and Sarah. I know it's the boring. I'm I'm now the two, three, and four seed. Whatever. I don't care. Um, that's fine. That's how I do my March Madness bracket anyway. Because that's hard to argue with that. Yeah. I mean. All right. Um. Hmm. I have Paige and Haley. Got a lot of power. I'm gonna take Heather Young. Okay. You know what? You know what, Josh? Don't do I think I know what you're gonna say, and I really I'm gonna don't. take Owen Scoggins as well. No. <laughs> oh no. Because <laughs> I'm like Missy and Sarah are good putters. Uh. But but I wanted I wanted one of I was like, Charlie won't pick them both. He's got Paige. Paige is a great putter. He doesn't need Heather and Owen. I need one of them to go with Katrina. <laughs> oh, crap. I'm sorry, my friend. No, you're not. <laughs> um, well. Also great players. That's the thing. They great are great putters they, and great players. Yeah, they are. They are. Um, okay. I am going to completely abandon my chances of winning the putting contest now. <laughs> and I, because with MPO, like. There are good putters on. I, I couldn't tell you. They're, they're all good putters. They're all basically. good putters. Yeah. Like who, who? Which two could you pick that you're like none of the other all stars? Any pairing ball stars could win that. That, that. that doesn't exist on the FPO side though. You put Heather and Owen together, and I don't think there's anybody, any two FPO players you can put together to touch them, and that, unless they have just a terrible off day. But I, yeah, sure. I agree. If they play to their statistics, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all so far as to say. And I'd have to double check the numbers, see if this is true, but I'm going to say it anyway. You can put those two together and at least in circle one, they could rival any MPO pairing you put together as well. Uh, they're top. They're the, they're the top two. They both shot 84% circle one. That's not quite at the highs of, of MPO. The top players in MPO hit the 90 mark. Um, but on but All-Stars, I think there was only 90 elite. or 89. Did they hit? And then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's 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 plenty of players in the 80s. Yeah. Like, Owen and Heather could hold their own in circle one. Absolutely. On they would be top 25 putters in MPO. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I'm abandoning any chance. Uh, I'm going to take Kona and Jessica Weiss. Um, going for distance now. <laughs> I'll win a different skill. <laughs> I was really, really hoping that you were going to leave Jessica Weiss on the board. Um. I mean, I think those are the best available players right there. So yeah. um, I'm going to take Lisa Fakus with my next pick. My putting is going to be very strong. And Deanne Carey as my final pick. I think that's a sneaky good pick. Um, I mean, I know it's near the, it's your last pick, but I think Deanne Carey has the potential to play really well in this format. Um, I, and that leaves me with Rebecca Cox, who hasn't toured a didn't didn't have an exceptional season. Um, played better towards the end of the year. Yeah, missed some time, but you know, there's some upside there. There is. I I do think she's probably going to be the last pick, but I don't know. Deanne Carey could end up being the last pick. Yeah. Okay. So where are you putting your skills contest? Okay, who's, skills. Who's, well, who's let's let's just go to putting. Okay, <laughs> come on. Obviously, I'm going to go Heather and Own. Um, who do you gonna who are you gonna put against me? Are you just gonna abandon ship? Uh. Yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to completely abandon. So I, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at it. I think I know where I want four of my players, and that leaves Jessica Weiss and Rebecca Cox, uh, who, mind you, when you look at their putting, it's not great. <laughs> um, uh, not only am I, like, when I say I'm abandoning ship, <laughs> I'm really abandoning ship. Let me pull it up. So Rebecca Cox, uh, 48%. Oh, no. Jessica Weiss, 57%. Oh, no. They they barely <laughs> together beat one of yours. I, I Honestly, though, I respect the decision to put your best players in the other categories. I think it's a smart move Thank against you. the Heather Own combo. I, no point. Who do you have in your accuracy department? I... 
so actually I actually want to do driving because I think driving okay, yeah, is, we, we yeah. just did the same thing. Yeah, yeah I driving is the more natural pick. Uh, I put Katrina and Kona. Two okay. very far throwers. I'm I'm happy with this division. The problem is I the problem is that you're going up against Paige and Haley King. Yes. In my team. And I think we can both agree that my team is probably gonna win that. Yeah. Yeah. I really need Paige to like pull her ACL or something. Oh god. Pull you her can't hamstring. say that. That's horrible. <laughs> okay, pull her hands. I don't actually I don't actually want her to hurt herself. Maybe, <laughs> let me be clear. I am kidding. <laughs> Um, All so, right, so that leaves us with uh, I have Lisa Fakus and Deanne Carey. You have Sarah Hokum and Missy Gannon for accuracy. You don't have a bad really, team, but I got to give you the edge just from the reputation of the players. Well, uh, and, and Missy, I mean, this is Missy's game. Like, if yeah, there was a fair. game designed for Missy, it's accuracy. So I feel like Deanne could hold her own here. She could. I, 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 so much depends on what the accuracy contest looks like in terms of who's going to win that. But I'm definitely going to give you the point. Okay. All right. So, okay. How about for uh, doubles? Um, who's your top seed? My top seed is going to be Katrina and Sarah. Okay. Sarah is. Oh, that's so tough. You're feeling the same pain that I felt in MPO, which is that huh. you had Eagle. Uh-huh. <laughs> which makes my life hard having to go against that. And in MPO, I have Paige, which makes it really hard to go against me. Yes. Yeah. I, I think I'm going to go Katrina and Sarah, which like, intuitively is not the right pick because Missy is a better putter than Sarah. So I should put Missy with Katrina, but I want, I, I'm not quite willing to just go all in on creating that power team. I think, sure. I think Sarah's excellent. Um, but but the page the, whoever you put with page is going to be difficult for me. So I'm going to put her with own Scoggins. That's yeah, very difficult for me. So obviously I'm I'm like going with probably the like weakest thrower, mm-hmm. um, with the strongest thrower, mm-hmm. and they're both tremendous putters. I feel like it's a great combination because I, I so. own is going to throw beautiful right down the damn center shots every time. And so if Paige gets a little wild, goes OB or something, you still have a very solid shot to play from. And so you just have this really nice matchup in doubles. And I think it's just going to be really difficult to beat that. Not knowing the course of two, I think that's an excellent pick. I I think you've got it. In my second spot, I'm going to go with Haley King and Lisa Fakus. Um, Fakus, great putter. Haley, good putter. Haley, great distance, great all-around player. Lisa, also very good all-around player, but certainly known for the putting more than anything else. But we also just watched Lisa Fakus like, hang in there at Worlds mm-hmm. for five rounds and almost have a chance to be in it if, you know, 16 didn't happen. So uh, that's what I'm going with there. This this is my Eagle mcmahon Matty O matchup, right? With just the highest ceiling player on this, on the, in, in the, the game, in the FPO side, paired with one of the most consistent players. So uh, excellent, excellent pairing. Um, I am going to put also just for funds. Uh, if you remember the match play championship press conference, I've got Kona Panis and Missy Gannon together. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Instead of having to snipe at each other, they get to rely on each other's skills this that's, time. That's right. I want them to bring back the shirts. <laughs> They should wear the shirts. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that's that's what I'm putting together: distance and putting. Right. It. it they made the jokes. It. It. it I think it's a, a really. I. I don't think we. I don't think I can pick a winner here. That one's hard. It depends on the. It depends on how Haley is that day. That's for the fair point. Fair but, point. Yeah. Uh, who's your third? That uh, leaves you with Jessica Weiss and Rebecca Cox. And I have Heather Young and Deanne Carey. Wow. Um I I really don't honestly I don't know here either. No. Yeah, I really don't because Jessica's going to get in the circle the most. Yes. But I don't have putting. So, but I mean even bad putters look like decent putters when it comes to doubles. You get two shots at it, but you know, Heather is going to be just like we're never going to miss putts. No, you're not. 
So that's gonna. I I feel like I get. I feel like that's the edge. It, it might be. It very well could be. But we can leave it open. What do you think? The the one leave thing it open? I will say is that putting is so much a confidence game, and your first putt is done with zero pressure in doubles. I've seen people who are atrocious putters just putt, bury it. just can't miss when they play doubles <laughs> because there's no stress because they know their partner gets to putt after. Yeah, so you're gonna get picked up by your by your teammate. I I don't know how I would pick this side. All right, well, let's go to the singles competitions. Here we go. Okay. It's Paige Pierce versus Katrina Allen. Uh, Paige. Give it to Paige, but it's competitive. It is competitive. It could Haley King versus Missy Gannon. Depends on what kind of day Haley has. I think you leave it open, right? Yeah. Uh, Lisa Fakus versus Sarah Hokum. My gut leans towards Sarah Hokum. I give it to Sarah, too. Yeah. Heather Young versus Jessica Weiss. I don't know. Depends, Depends on the, on the course. course. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on the course. Leave it open. Okay. Deanne Carey versus Kona Panis. I think Kona takes that. Gotta one. give it to Kona. And Owen Scoggins versus Rebecca Cox. Uh I give it to Owen. Gotta give it to Owen. Yeah. Um, so you've got the you got the open. So that's two and two. I win two of the skills contests in our in our decisions here. But I do you take inaccuracy. One. And I get the page own doubles combination. We left the other two open. So I have a total of one, two, three, four, five points to your three. Three. But and we have some open, open categories. Than there were MPO. Yep. So uh I'm up by a point in the ones that we chose overall between MPO and FPO. Um do you wish you'd taken a putter in those first two picks that you had? No, no, I don't really. Like because the putting contest is only one point. Good point. Uh, in doubles, with like I mentioned, you can see okay putters become exceptional putters. And good point. Missy is a good putter. So, okay. Well, I, there I, we go. I don't regret my choices. So uh, overall, I'm up by a point, and uh, this would be fun. I mean, if this is how it shook out, I, I highly doubt this is how it will shake out. I, I will say though, I hope that there is enough time between the actual draft and the competitions so that. Like I can sit down and fill out a bracket because I think that's going to be so fun. Yeah. I wonder when they're going to do the draft. It's not like they need to do it while everybody's there. I bet they will though. Well, I would hate though. What I would hate is if they do the draft and then they show up to the skills contest and Eagles like, yeah, you know, my boy Adam and James are going to be doing the putting contest. And then right there you have to fill out, oh, who's going to win, right? I, I hope that they set all the brackets well. All in the lineups are decided ahead of time so that we can all fill out a bracket. Well, that's just some free advice right there for there, how they should run go. this because I totally <laughs> agree. We need to have some bets. We need to have some over-unders on all this stuff. Um, speaking of over-unders, let's do the playoff game over-unders this week for the NFL games for this week's over-under competition. Okay. And uh, so let me pull up the... I'm going to pull up the lines right now. Okay. I have not looked at the lines, so. I have I have I've not looked yet either at the okay. o, at the at the totals. I've looked at the point spreads. So, the totals this week uh Bengals Chiefs 54 and a half and Rams 49ers 46. Um okay, I will take the Bengals Chiefs and I'll let you have the privilege of doing the Niners Appreciate it. Rams. Um, 54 and a half, you said 54 and a half. <laughs> I, I'm going to take the over. <laughs> wow. I'm actually glad to have the under. I feel like that number is so high. I mean, it, these teams do have the capacity to put up like 70 points. Um, the only but, way this game is interesting is if the Bengals put up at least 30. I mean, that Bengals O-line is bad. They are so bad. How many? How many did they? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I think he had nine sacks. He took. I know it was Burrow. That is a hot. Uh, uh, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm flipping. You know what? You got to flip all year last year. I want the under. You talked me into it. Uh, okay, all right. I'll take it. All I right. get the over. All over fifty four and a half. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take the over on the 49ers Rams game. What was the score on that one? Forty six. And <sighs> that's both. I don't for know. A team There's that, something about this yeah, game. That tell, that didn't I just feel touchdown. like. The teams know each other so well. The play calling is going to – we're going to see some scoring. Interesting. And, I, you know, 
the, how bad the 49ers offense looked last week against the Packers, like I definitely understand. But I think that that's actually pushing this number too far down. Okay. It was freezing cold. Uh-huh. And there were some like weird penalties that really hurt the 49ers from I think they could have scored two, three touchdowns. Uh, that's not typically what happens to us. Um, I think the Rams offense looked amazing last week. Oh. I, I think we're going to give them some trouble with our pass rush, but I still think that this number is a little too low. I'll take the over. Okay. All right. There it is. Okie doke. So that's our over under for this week. Uh, let us know what your thoughts are on our mock draft. Hit us up. Upshot at ultiworld.com. Become a subscriber. Join the Ulti World Disc Golf Discord. It's great. Um, I'm sure we'll hear from people there and which picks they feel like we botched. Uh, and make sure you join us for our subscriber bonus segment where we talk about grading the manufacturer's off seasons. So we will be back with that. Uh, again, you can become a subscriber at discgolf.ultiworld.com slash subscribe. For Josh Mansfield, I'm Charlie Eisenhood saying so long. We'll talk to you next week right here on The Upshot.